because we only have one hour, right? Uh, and we have a lot of stuff to cover. And then after that, we got wonderful party, right, to look forward to. And I'm really, really surprised that all of you showed up. I was a bit worried because, <laughs> you know, this is the last session, right, before, before the party starts. So I was really worried, but thanks for showing up, okay? I'll hopefully make it worth your time. If not, I'll be at the party so you can talk to me. <laughs> and uh, when I'm drunk, it hurts less. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me just start with uh, the topic and a bit of an introduction here, right? So um, the name of the session is Advanced Mock Types Going Beyond Bars and Lines, okay? Um, it's a repeat session from previous conferences. So uh, originally, uh, we did one of the sessions in 2016. It was really, really popular, so we did it again in 2017. And uh, 2018, they could not find anyone, so they said, Murnal, do you want to do it? I like to say yes, so I said okay. Uh, and then later on, when I looked at the session, I realized that during the whole session, what they were doing is they were building uh, 10 different charts, right? So it was literally bang, 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 you know, uh, let's just build some charts. And what I realize is a lot of the, those chart times, right, are firstly a bit obsolete now that they've been around and people know about them already, right? Second is that um, just like they were invented or created and shared, any one of you can do the same as well, right? So it's not about encouraging people to simply just copy others, but to actually create your own as, own, own as well, right? So what I did this time is I took a bit of a um, different angle to the, to the session, right? So of course I'm gonna build some charts, but what I really wanna do is I wanna pay emphasis on how you can invent your own charts, bless you. Um, I'll, I'll basically try to um, help you, you know, look for ways where you can easily find advanced chart types, also go about, you know, uh, building your own in future, right? Invent your own and also uh, what are some best practices around it if you're gonna have some complex charts, okay? Because they do require quite a lot of different skills and hacking at times, right? So uh, how can you make it easy for the rest uh, of the users, right? So that's my objective. As I said, I wanna teach you how to fish, not necessarily like just give you three chart types because guess what? In reality, you may actually need 30, all right? Sounds good? Cool. So. Let's start, oh no, sorry, I should do my introduction as well. <laughs> um, so I'm Renal Shredder. Uh, I've been with, uh, well, my card's not here. I've been with Tableau for over seven years, so this is my eighth year, uh, using Tableau for over nine years. Uh, I think my only fame to glory is I can say that I was the first product consultant outside of US, right? And uh, things have changed, right? So at that time, we were a 160 employee company worldwide. Now we are over 4,000, okay? And this is all in seven years, so I'm, I'm lucky to be part of this growth, okay? Uh, what do I do now? Uh, I run the solutions consulting team for uh, NEMIA region, we call it, at Tableau. Uh, essentially, it is Africa, Benelux, Middle East, and Nordics, right? I know it's a very interesting <laughs> uh, collection of regions. Uh, the good news is I get uh, full coverage of sun, regardless of the time of the year. <laughs> Right, so I'm never depressed. Or uh, that's what I would like to think. Um, so let's start the session then, all right? Classic one, right? Um, so every person who's at Tableau has to go through internal certifications, okay? So the first one that you do is called bronze certification, okay? And this question, we've had that for years, okay? How many chart types are in Tableau? Because this is something that customers also ask us all the time, right? So Anyone want to take a guess? I'll give you a little hint here. All right, so we can do three times eight, 24. Is that the right answer? You know, I would not make it that easy. Of course not. <laughs> That's not the answer, right? So what is the right answer, right? And we were told the right answer is unlimited. And you might go, yeah, okay, whatever. Of course, you're going to say that. <laughs> uh, no, seriously. <laughs> you can actually create unlimited number of charts. Okay? And what I really want to do is spend the first half of the session 
to build my case for exactly that. Okay? And then we'll progress building some charts. Okay? So let's go down um, the history lane here. And if you look at the timeline of things, right? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take you to a tour of history here, okay? But, but it is important that I talk about these three important events, right? So in uh, 1967, we had uh, Jacques Bertin. He uh, published this book called Semiology of Graphics, okay? Why is it important? It's important because in 1967, he started working out all these different pieces which are extremely important in building the language or the grammar or the visual system that we have in place today, right? He started laying all the groundwork, okay? He had it in his book. Then what he started doing, he started taking that and he started, you know, working on also the technology piece. So that was the initial work being done on something closely associated to, let's say, Tableau, right? Where he basically broke it down into like just the bare basics, right? And he tried to see, like, can I put technology on top of it, right? What can I do with it? So that's 1967. Fast forward that into 1986, right? This is Jock McKinley. He is vice president of research and experience at Tableau. Um, he actually coined the term information uh, visualization. And part of his PhD dissertation at Stanford was how to do automatic representation of data. Okay? So he actually extended Burton's work, right, into an automatic presentation. That was his thesis. And then we fast forward, right, to 2003. And then you have Chris Tolte, who took Burton's work and Jock McKinley's work, right, and came up with a language called Vis Visual Query Language, the VisQL, right? Now, you might go, okay, Mrinal, I didn't come here for a history on VisQL and all of that good stuff, okay? But I think it's important. The reason why it's important is what we've done here, right, at, Vis uh, at, at Tableau is not just invented this thing called VisQL, right? We brought all of this work that has been put in over the years into a product, right? And this happened when, you know, all these three gentlemen got together because it was the work of, you know, Burton, Jock McKinley, Chris Tolte, but also the other elements which were really, really important. And in here, the other elements are the HCI, the human computer interaction piece, right? Yes, of course, if you can code, you can do whatever, right? But what if I want to make it ridiculously easy for someone to work with data or to make visualizations, right? How do I work with that? How do uh, computer graphics help me here, right? So databases are there as well, connecting live, you know, taking extracts. All of this is also important in the grand scheme of things when you're building visualizations, right? So it all came together in, in a product. Behind the scene, when I say VisQL, Essentially, what's going on is you're dragging and dropping things, right? And it's translating that drag and drop or placement of things into a query, okay? This could be a SQL or an MDX, and it'll get the result and represent it back. So if you think about it, it is a whole system, a visual system with its own language, own syntax, own grammar, and all of that good stuff. Right? which makes it so powerful, and hence the reason I can say you can pretty much create unlimited charts. And I'll, 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 I'll discuss um, more in detail later on. Right? So let's start with one. All right. Now, we all create um, calendars. We have you know, the calendar filter selections and so on. Uh, but sometimes, like something simple like this, which is a heat map calendar, right? or a Pareto chart, or in fact, even a donor chart, right? How would you go about building in Tableau? And uh, how does this whole VisQL thing play, right? So I want to spend some time on it. So let's actually just go into Tableau here, OK? And um, start with building the first heat map calendar. Now, in Tableau, I can always start with show me if I want it, right? Or I can just start with a drag and drop. So let's just start with a drag and drop. I'm going to introduce first my date here. And I can see that I have two year. So let's just drill into it 
from year quarter onto the month level and I can see okay I have this one let's just create a calendar for just this month right so I just say keep only and then drill down further and I can see it splits into days all right for my calendar the one that I was building I don't want days I actually want days to be laid out just like a normal calendar right I don't want it to go just all the way uh, cross so what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna change this and my mouse disappeared right where's my mouse okay mouse is back all right um, so let's just change this to then uh, let's say weekday all right so I get my weekdays down there I take my weekdays down here and change it into a week number and guess what I've got sort of like a structure that I need for that calendar I'm gonna bring in my index change drop it on color let's say make, let's make it square and if I make it entire view you can see that I've pretty much got my calendar working all right and all I need to do is maybe a bit of formatting and the previous day that I had here I take and drop it on labels and here you go okay so now what we just done quickly is build a calendar where the red basically tells me the index change was bad a blue tells me the index change was good now this is not a chart type right essentially what I've just done here is I've just placed things on a bunch of like columns and rows shelves that's it I've added things in level of detail and that's about it so if you were to then look at um, what Tableau is doing essentially what we're doing here is we are building something simple which could be a normal table if I didn't add color right in this case I added color and now it becomes an interesting chart so what I'm trying to get to is just by rearranging th things you can actually do loads of stuff um, you don't need to basically have complex charts right it's it can be as simple as that let's look at another one right so Pareto everyone knows what's a Pareto chart right the 80 20 thing right um, it's very popular right everyone everyone wants to use Pareto charts let's just let's just see like how would we go about that in, in Tableau, right? So I've got this uh, country field here. I've got some population. So let me just drop uh, total population in here. And I can see that the world total population is 85 billion, which is not true, right? So let's just add a little filter. And uh, I'm going to make it uh, 2012 only. So this seems a bit realistic. The total world population is 7 uh, billion. Let's break it down by country, okay? So if I break it down and maybe just sort it descending I can see that okay you have uh, China India really massive populations and then after that US right well what if I want to convert this into a Pareto right so I want to see like where does the 80 percent of the world population live right is it 20 percent of the countries right um, so in that case I want to turn this around right into a Pareto what do I start with first of all I need to convert that into percentage of totals right so let's just do a simple copy right here and I'm gonna say my second axis give me percentage of total so you can see that China is 19.25 percent of the world population meaning one-fifth of the population in the world right is in China um, all right great so let's take this and um, make it the way that we want so I'm gonna come here and apply the same thing and hit OK and what you see is now everything is sorted right so I can see when I come to China it's 19.25 percent if you have India and China together then it's 36.88 percent population and the more I go this way I can see now that if I go to Iran let's say up to this level that's 67.79 percent of the world population but I still don't know what percentage of countries is it right so uh, we're still in the process of building this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this into a line 
all right? And then uh, make it uh, dual axis. This guy should be a bar, okay? Whoops, no, oh, sorry. Okay, so uh, what I now need is instead of the country names here, right, because I can drop quite easily that 80% uh, mark here, right, so which is, um, 0.8, right? But I want to see like what, what percentage of the countries are also covered. So let's convert this country into a percentage calculation as well. I'm going to take this country and drop it into the level of detail here. And then I can convert this into a measure, count distinct. It will look a bit funny right now. Why? Because I'm not doing anything with this country. It only thinks I'm doing count distinct across the whole view here. So let's just go in and convert this into uh, running total, come in here, edit table calculation, percentage of total. And after I do something, whoops, where'd it go? Should select, all right. And just like that, right, now we got our Pareto done, okay? So if I drop in maybe the 20% here, okay? So what I can see here is that 20% of the countries actually would have over 80% of the population covered, okay? Or I can just start working the other way. Now, what is this? This is basically a bar chart. It's a line chart with different aggregations and a bunch of calculations going on, right? So it's not like a primary chart type, if you think about it, right? It's a derivative of a bar chart and a line chart with different level of details. Make sense, right? Let's try one more, a donut chart. We have icing type for donut. We have number of donuts. Let's just use a simple show me. I'm going to say give me a little pie chart, okay, so I can see the pie chart, right? Now, some of the techniques in building charts are just native, right, where you basically just drag and drop, right click, quick table calculation, move things around, right? Some of it requires you to get creative, all right? So, can you see that I don't have anything on row, uh, rows and columns here, okay? When we create a pie chart, there is no X and Y. It's just a pie chart, right? But if you want to get an axis, you can create your own dummy axis if you want it, right? So for example, I could just do something like min, uh, let's just do one, right? And what this basically does for me is it creates an axis. If I take this now, maybe copy it, guess what? I have multiple axes, right? And now I can control what I want to do on each axis. So for example, on this guy, I can say, actually, you know what? I don't want icing type or I don't want any of this uh, in this view. Don't make it pi. Actually, I want it to be circle and I want the size to be a little bit small. And the color should be white with a bit of a border around it. And now that I have this, I can simply take this, make it a dual axis, and voila, you got a donut chart. <laughs> right? It's that simple. Right? And once I have this, I can just make it an entire view, clean it up a little bit, right? So let's just say I don't want the headers, remove that, and then maybe you know just adjust the sizes to make it whichever way you want it, right? So let's just come here and uh, put that, and in the middle of that, we're gonna just drop label for donuts. Right, okay, sorry, not this one. For this guy, we're gonna drop donuts on label, do some uh, alignment here, right? And there you go, right? So, what's the point that I'm trying to make? If I look at the first one, which is heat map calendar, 
it's not even a chart type is what I'm trying to tell you, okay. It's just a bunch of X and Ys, you know, things on color, we're just leveraging the basic that we have in Tableau, right. Pareto chart, what is it? Simple chart types like bar chart, line chart, different, different level of details, right, and the cool table calculations to get the effect that we need, right. What is donut chart? Nothing but just a simple hackery, right, where we just create a dummy axis, right, and then we create a dual axis of it, okay. So now that you've seen, right, how you can just create some cool charts just like that, let's dwell into a little bit deeper. The way that I like to explain to our customers is the way Tableau is designed, and when you look at the show me, it's just like a color palette. You know, we have chart types, right? So just like, you know, you can take like red, green, blue, start combining them, mix and match in different proportions and you get different colors, right? Same thing with chart as well, right? So you can take a, a bar chart, you can take a line chart, bring it together, do things with it, right? Think about like what's a geo map? It's a scatter plot, right? So you have this basic chart types and when you start comparing, uh, like putting different mock types, level of detail, you can get some really, really, really cool outputs. You saw some in the, in the uh, Tableau Public you know, gallery over there, right? I mean, they don't look like your normal charts, but at the core of it, it is still those fundamental chart types, okay? So it's about taking the chart type and, and, and developing on it. Essentially what it is, it's just a bunch of rows and columns, right? That's what it breaks down to, or an XY coordinate system, period, right? Some of it can be difficult to get to this level, <laughs> right? Some of it can be ridiculously easy. And where you spend time also depends, right? So let me show you what I mean by that, right? So like everyone knows what's a hex style map, right? If you don't, um, I'll sh I'm going to show it to you anyways, <laughs> right? So um, if you take, let's say, a, a normal map, okay? So let's just take uh, this one, like a US map, right? With Alaska all the way up here, Hawaii all the way out there, guess what, the, date, uh, the, the ink ratio, right, the data to ink ratio is really, really poor here, right, because I have so much white space being just wasted, right. But in a, in a hex style map, if I wanted, I could just bring in you know, Alaska a little bit closer, Hawaii a little bit closer as well. In fact, DC can have its own spot out there in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, it would be a really good idea if Trump were to live there. Um, but, you know, how do you, how do you go about doing this, right? It's actually really, really simple, right? So um, I'm going to just open up the input file for this hex map plots, okay? So what you need to do, first of all, is just create a simple Excel file where you're going to say each state, which row and column is it going to go in? Okay, so what you're doing is, if I were to go back to um, here, right, you're basically just figuring out like where Washington's going to be placed, where Montana is going to be placed, and so on. Okay, so you can start this exercise by simply just looking at it over here as well and figure out how you want the placement to be. And essentially, when you have that done, you're just going to join your data. Okay, this is an extract. But you're going to basically join your data where the original data comes from the sheet, right? And the placement, right, comes from the sheet one. You with me so far? And all you're doing after that is literally bringing the row, which was, right, the row value and the column value, right, into rows and columns, just like that. Right? And then you're going to take your uh, state, maybe drop it in the level of detail, and that's it. You start getting what you're looking for, right? So now if I say in the shape, uh, I want to have um, the hex shapes, right, the bin um, that I created. So I can put them in my custom shapes, okay? So this is my custom shapes. I'm just going to select this one, and there you go. 
but this is not how US is supposed to look like, right? So I'm just going to go here and maybe say reverse the axis and I'd apply and there you go. Okay, so this looks like US more or less. Um, and then once I have this, I can then just go ahead and, you know, add whatever else I want on it, right? So I can just simply take this one, drop it on color, maybe take the abbreviation, drop it on label, and then start doing the formatting part. So let's just say keep it in the center like that. Um, remove all the grid lines from the back, and you get the idea, right? Clean it up. So what is this? This is simply an example of an XY coordinate system, right? It's just a bunch of rows and columns. So where do you think the hard work is for building this um, hex map? It's in that Excel spreadsheet. Do you have to do it over and over again? No, right? We're going to create this once. I mean, I hope the US map doesn't keep changing, right? Um, but I mean, once it's set, it's set, right? So you can then just uh, put it in your database, or you can just you know, join it and create a data source and simply just leverage that. Right? It's not a lot of work involved in Tableau. Cool. Moving on. So what can you do with it now that we know it's just an X, X and Y coordinate system, rows and columns? Well, you can do some really, really cool things, right? For example, you can be a true data hero. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, well, if I just go to this view, right? So we got um, Bowie here. And if you look at it, right, what is it? Each polygon here, right, it's got an XY coordinate, it's got a path, it's got a color, right? And um, yeah, this is, this is a visual, right? If I go to uh, my home gallery, and I'll just show you a bunch of uh, visuals here. All of this, I can just keep scrolling, right? They were all uh, done in Tableau, right? So does that mean in today's session I show you how to build each and every single one of them? The answer is no, right? Because you guys are going to go and build your own other chart types, right? But I hope you, you know, from this appreciate that it somehow all makes sense. And I really want to use this somewhere in my presentation. <laughs> so here you go. It's in this slide. All right. So moving on. Um, am I trying to say that now that you know you can build any chart type in Tableau, you should be making all the all the charts that you uh, would come across? The answer is yes and no. Right? Um, I want you to basically, whenever someone comes to you and says, "Can you build me a chart type X?" Don't just throw everything that you're doing and just say, okay, I'm on it. Please don't, right? Ask. Stop and ask the questions like, why do you want this chart type? Right? If someone says, like, I want a radial tree, why do you want a radial tree? Please, please help me understand, right? Because not everyone is data literate. Not everyone knows about visualization. Not everyone knows what is good and what is bad. It's okay to challenge people and educate them every now and then, right? But I can understand sometimes someone just wants a gauge, so just, all right, you have to do it uh, or look for a job elsewhere. But, um, you know, do stop and think. Don't just simply go and start building, right? Because there's a difference between do you really need it versus do you want it, right? Because there is a trade-off involved. So start with this question. Like, what is the analytical value of the chart you're asking me to build? All right? The reality is that some charts, right, especially some of the complex charts, are really, really good at, you know, when you, when you look at them. I'll be perfectly honest, I struggle to understand those charts. And I do this for a living. Okay? I look at charts for a living. And I find it difficult to understand. Right? So do ask, right? I mean, what is, what is it that you're trying to achieve here? Right? Don't just simply go about building. Because there is a trade-off involved, right? Some of the complex chart types, especially the ones that I'm going to show you later on, right, do take a lot of effort, right? Now, is that worth it? 
I mean, maybe I can get the same analytical value or maybe more in a very simple bar chart, right? And if I could just engage with them in an intelligent manner, right, and convince them that it's the focus on analytical value, who knows, over time, you know, they might change the way that they look at their data as well. Yeah? So, typically when we talk about business intelligence, analytics, data visualization, we all come with a little build mentality, right? So if you look at all the traditional tools and technologies out there, you, what do you do? You start with, what's step one? Select a chart type, right? Uh, so it's, it's basically a build mentality, right? Where you start with a chart type first, and then you fit things in it. And then in the end, you get the chart that you picked, right? It's a, it's a very build mentality, right? You, you're focusing on building stuff. Whereas, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, right? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but it's just different mindset. I guess where people truly are successful with Tableau is when they have an analyze mentality, right? It's like, I'm trying to solve a problem. I'm trying to ask a question from my data. I'm trying to converse with my data. I want to find X, Y, and Z, right? Or I don't know X, Y, and Z, right? These are the sort of, you know, approaches which work very nicely in the Tableau world. Okay, so when someone is asking you to build a chart type, a, 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 a good question could be, great, um, what are you trying to answer, right? And start with that, right? Not with, yeah, I'm going to build it for you. Um, it can be fun to build it sometimes, though. All right. Also, it's also very important to understand that there is no single view of your data that's going to give you all the answers, right? So if you convince me that, okay, you know, if you do this chart type, this is the best chart type because I get so much value out of it, I'm not convinced entirely, right? Because a lot of times all I need is just a bunch of visualizations together and I can make a lot more sense because I have interactivity, right? I can interact with one, with the other, right? And I have multiple views. It's easier on the eyes and it's just easier to build and just easy all around, okay? Cool. So, let's get to it. If you have to, I mean, if you must, then how do you go about building, and I'm gonna call it a fancy chart. I'll be perfectly honest, I'm not a big fan of complex charts. Uh, the reason is, as I said, I'm more of the analyze mindset, not of the build mindset, okay? How do you do it? First of all, what I'll say is do not reinvent the wheel. Our community is amazing. I mean, it's amazing. A lot of people have already built all sorts of charts. Okay? So don't reinvent it yourself. Do repurpose other people's work. Um, there's lots of uh, stuff out there in the community, right? And this is an extremely important one, right? Some people spend, you know, their... their uh, free time, you know, their, their, their family time, that's actually kind of poor, uh, weekends, everything, right? Um, doing work for the community, for the benefit of the others, right? Please do make sure that we also give credit, right, where it's due, right? So, how do we start this journey? You can simply Google, right? Here's how it uh, would work. Uh, this is my favorite, by the way. And then you click on it, and then it says, cool. So anytime you want to look for a chart type, I know this is, I mean, funny for some. Some might just say, OK, um, that wasn't funny. Um, but basically, the point that I'm trying to make is it's literally that easy, right? Just type in, like, Tableau, a chart type, right? And, and then you'll, you'll find links to things, right? And then you can start repurposing their work. Let me show you like how would that look like, right? So for example, this is a radial tree map, right? And this is a blog entry from Bora Baron. Now Bora used to uh, work at Tableau and uh, he's got this nice little post. When you run through the post, generally what you will find is references to, um, you know, links. So for example, you can find the actual chart or the workbook. Most often than not, they would host it on Tableau Public or on their own uh, environment which you can uh, use. Uh, they would also make available any other, um, you know, files that you need, right? So in this case, 
Uh, he's also made available an Excel file that you can use, right? Instructions. And when you're running through it, right, you'll see mentions of uh, things like binning and densification, right? Now, here's where it gets fun, right? You're going to be like, all right, what is it? <laughs> what does this mean? Okay? So these are terms, terminology, vocab, whatever you want to call it, which our community members, Zen masters, invented or came up with, right? I have a mixed feeling about it, I'll be perfectly honest. As I said, I've been using Tableau for 10 years. I've built all sorts of charts uh, by mistake. <laughs> I just never named them, <laughs> right? Or I came up with a whole bunch of different techniques. I just didn't call it something. <laughs> and in fact, now when I hear words like scaffolding and densification, I get lost. But when I look at what it is, then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course I know it, <laughs> right? So this, when, the, when you see terminologies like this, it can be a little bit confusing, right? So what I would, what I would recommend then is then just simply again take this and do what? Google. Tableau, Google it, <laughs> right? And then you'll find, you know, like we have webinars on it, we have articles on it, we got blog entries on it, right? And this is the way to then just dig deeper into it. Cool? Um, all right. Now, these are some actual chart types, right, that have been built in Tableau. Right? Now, I'm not going to get into the detail right, of how they're all built, but I'll cover some. So uh, who's supporting all of this effort? Right? It's the fantastic community that we have. Right? It's the Zen masters that we have. I mean, these guys put in so much work in making sure that everyone who uses Tableau are successful. And you know, we are very lucky to have this community. Right? So um, lesson number one is when you go to this blog and let's say you find a workbook and you know you find uh, all the instructions it's very tempting because we all you know are busy and we also need to build other charts uh, and we might simply just go and repurpose without actually understanding how it's built right or how it works right this is my favorite way of learning take someone's work deconstruct it Deconstructing at times could very simply be moving things from one place to the other because <laughs> then the whole, the whole visual will open up, right? So earlier if something was on column and rows, right, if you move that one from column to row, suddenly the whole visual will open up and you'll understand, oh, this is how it was built, right? So lesson number one, deconstruct it, recreate it yourself. Because in the process, what's going to happen is you're going to appreciate, you know, the beauty of someone's solution, right? But the, at the same time, you'll also realize the true power of Tableau. And once you start doing that, is when you're going to feel comfortable with it. Um, when you get into techniques, right, make sure that you keep working on your Jedi hacking skills. Now, who knows what Tableau Jedi is? No? Do you guys care? All right, I'll still tell you. Um, so, our product looked a lot different 10 years ago, I'll be honest, right? Um, a lot of the stuff that you just take for granted now, trust me, required some really, really creative approaches, all right? And uh, because, you know, it required um, special skills and powers, we call it the Jedi <laughs> skills, all right? To be perfectly honest, a lot of those Jedi skills now are built in Tableau features and functions. So um, you don't really need them, but I still use the word Jedi hacking. Essentially what it is, is you know, you're going to stretch the boundary of what you thought possible in Tableau. Right? When you start appreciating that, then you can do some really, really, really cool things with it. Right? So what is a true recipe right, to really start making your own advanced chart types? I think that person um, does not just need one skill, right? So that person would have really, really good data wrangling skills, okay? So to build some advanced chart types, a lot of times it's just about organizing the data in a particular way. The rest of it is pretty straightforward, right? But to wrap your head around in terms of how do I organize that data does need skills, okay? This person is going to be a quant, right? It does require, depending on the certain types of chart types, right, 
uh, it requires knowledge of trigonometry, right? Um, statistics. Um, if you want, yeah, you can get into uh, calculus as well, right? Now, do you need it for all the chart types? The answer is no, but it definitely helps, right? So to create, you know, curves, for example, tr knowledge of trigonometry does help. Yeah? And then finally, this person would have some really, really strong tableau skills, right? So you can just look at this and help appreciate, right? I mean, it takes a lot to be really good at building complex charts. It's not something that I can just give you right now, like these are the eight thought chart types and good luck you know, building the 80 more. That's not how it works, right? I think what is really important here is to develop an appreciation of like what it really takes, right? To build all of, all of those complex charts, right? So if I were to list down some of the skills that you need, these are just a few, right? So scaffolding, densification, unusual joins, I call it, right? I thought I knew how to write SQL. <laughs> when I saw what you can do with custom SQL to create certain chart types, I learned how I was taught not to write SQL, <laughs> right? But <laughs> it's, it's really, really cool, right? Um, then, yeah, like blending, right? Um, not the intended purpose, but you can build some really, really cool charts, you know. Nested table calcs. What is the highest degree of nested table calcs anyone's built here? Trust me, it can be a lot of fun, all right? Eighth degree, tenth degree of like nested table calcs, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> right? Try it sometime. Um, okay. So what do you do? Because you just said, like, you know, there, I just said, like, there's so many skills out there that are needed. Now, let's be realistic. In an organization, you guys sitting here might get really, really, you know, excited about this, and you might actually go and invest your time in doing, spending time in learning all of this, right? But do you think the rest of the organization is ready for it? The answer is no, okay? I mean, I'll be honest. Like, in my team, <laughs> I don't have everyone in my team who would say that they can comfortably build any complex chart. And guess what? We work at Tableau. This is what we do, right? And the reason for that is, you know, as I said, it requires a lot of different skills and time, right? So what I would say is when you come across a complex chart, try to think about this complex chart in terms of like template. How can I take this complex chart and reduce all the complexity and create a template which I can just give it to someone and they can just repurpose it or reuse it without too much effort, okay? So I'll explain, I'll explain um, what I mean by that. Let's look at um, this blog post by uh, Ken Flair Lodge, okay? Now, Ken, he's a, he's a very, very um, talented guy, right? He's an extremely talented guy and the sort of stuff that he comes up with, you know, I mean, I'll be honest, makes me want to pick up my, my, my math book and start learning trigonometry all over again, <laughs> right? He, he, he reminds me my place, and I, I, I like that, <laughs> right? And uh, he's, he's written a very nice um, article. It was a while back, okay? And this was a retrospective um, blog post, you know, on his one-year use of Tableau. Okay? and how he got hooked on to Tableau. It's an interesting read, right, because he was not convinced that Tableau is all that great. He could not understand, like, why people, you know, uh, love it so much. In fact, he was comparing it with uh, other tools, and he was trying to build something, right? He wanted to recreate this world of, world of religion, you know, this map. He could not do it in the beginning in Tableau, right? So he thought it just wasn't you know, the software for it, right? So he built it in something else, and then later on he was building a periodic table. He decided to build an interactive periodic table for his daughter, all right? And here's where he started realizing the true power, okay? And he runs us through it, and then he says, I finally recreated this view in Tableau, okay? I think it's a nice read because it helps you appreciate, like, what people actually do go through when they're using Tableau for the first time, right? And then why would they think that, you know, this is something fun, 
right? And now you look at it, right? The guy has actually built so many cool visualizations, right? And after building some of the most amazing visualizations, so if you look at his blog, right? And if you look at the type of um, charts he's building, right? He's building some really, really, he's doing pointillism, he's doing adventures in 3D, he's doing some really, really cool stuff here, right? And he, he realized that, okay, I'm doing all of this stuff, it's, it's really cool, but people can't build it by themselves, people can't easily repurpose it, people can't easily reuse it, right? So what is the way forward? And here's where, right, he started writing blogs on how to create a template. Right, so here's a little template I'm in for creating sunburst charts, right? And what he's basically saying is that with the sunburst chart, a good chunk of the work is actually in the data, how you prepare the data, right? And um, what he said is, okay, I can do all of that in Tableau quite easily, right? Instead, what I want to do is I want to have a little staging process, right? Or I want to have an interim process, right? Uh, which is just repeatable. So he uses Excel, right? So let me actually just show you what I, what I mean by that. Um, so it's here, right? So if you look at this Excel spreadsheet, right? Widths and paths, right? This is something that he uses for his visual. He uses this path, right, to basically like, you know, just draw the extended arcs, like, you know, the curves that he needs, right? And here's the real data, right? So here's, here are the sales values that you need for your chart, okay? And you can just make some changes here, and then once you're ready, um, you basically just update that connect it to your um, visualization and you know you got that updated with your own data right so the point that he's trying to make is if you do all of those calculations here right then people might not truly understand it might find it complicated right but at the same time if you just tell them that you know your job is to just basically update this few values and everything else is going to be fine. It's a little bit easier, right? Now, I know what you're thinking. How would it scale in an enterprise, right, where you have data coming from a database and so on? I'll, I'll discuss a couple of um, um, approaches we can take there. But what, what is easy here is that it's just a template. Change number in one place and the, everything else just works. Right. So let's just go back to my presentation here then keep moving. So when it comes to creating templates, there are loads of different places um, we can make things easy and repeatable, okay? So the first stage is uh, the data prep side, right? So ask yourself a question when it comes to preparing data for advanced chart types, like is it something that I can just automate, okay? Can I just make it repeat by itself? If the answer is yes, then just go ahead and do it. Don't think, just do it. Because, again, when you have to do it, you won't have to waste time, right? Um, the easiest way is you can create a data input template like that Excel file. You just simply update that Excel file, right? An Excel file could also be just um, an interim stage, right, where you bring in data from other places as well. Google Sheets is also an interesting one if you just want a low-tech way of, you know, creating templates, right? Um, but then if you got data prep tools like, you know, Tableau Prep, Altrix, the list goes on, right? Um, yeah, create a workflow instead if that makes it easy for you, right? In some cases, uh, that is the best way. In other cases, like for example, uh, David Bowie, you know, that, that particular picture, right? The whole hard work there is in taking an, uh, a bitmap or an image and then convert it into the polygons and the type of data that you need. Now for that one, the piece of code is already available out there on the internet, right? So then simply just repurpose that script or code, right, to get the data. And a lot of that could be automated as well, right? 
So again, take the complexity away, right? Just, just basically automate that piece. Um, templatize a data source. So what does that mean? Um, take the complexity of your task, time, and effort, move it to the data source, right? I'll, I'll show you in just a second what I mean by that, okay? So you can create a data source one, and everyone else will simply just leverage it, okay? So imagine you have a, a data source, which is just for a Coxcomb chart, right? Which has got, which has got data formatted the right way that they need, and in fact, you know, if possible, you can have a chart as well. So simply, you just leverage the existing work, right? So let me show you uh, what, I, what I mean by that in uh, a moment. You can templatize a chart as well. In fact, you know what, let me just jump onto that piece first. All right, so let's go here and look at um, chart template radio, right? So some of my customers, what they're doing is they're taking uh, all these complex charts and they, they have a special place on their Tableau server and they simply just publish it there within, with nice little instructions, right? And whenever someone wants to use it, they can simply just go here, uh, open that one and uh, if they, let's say, so if this is the one, let's just go there, so. Right, if they want this one, right, I can simply just uh, take this, um, copy, open a new one, paste it, and my computer is slow. Right? So I just pasted it, right? And now in here, no one is stopping me from connecting to other data sources as well if I wanted, right? And then I can throw all of them together in, in the same dashboard. Um, if you don't want to have it, let's say, on server where people, so typically, you know, the way people will pull this is, you know, you just say open workbook, you go there on server, there will be a special project, complex chart types or advanced chart types, you pick one, bring it down, copy it, paste it into wherever you want, right? And the person who published that, right, has already taken care of the data part, right? So in this case, it would already be bringing in the sales data that you need or whatever else, right? So the hard work has been done once, and, and the rest of the guys simply just need to bring that chart and just introduce it into their workbook. Does that make sense, trying to say? Yeah? Okay. If you don't want to put it on server, there is another easy way as well, which is just simply like, you know, bookmark it, right? So you can have like some of this advanced one just as a bookmark, right? So let's say I open a, a new uh, Tableau instance, right? I can simply just uh, go to window, bookmark, and say just radial tree, and I'll just bring it here, and I can start using it as well, right? So there are a couple of easy ways of like just repurposing some of this complex advanced charts, right? Um, all right. So bookmark is your friend here if you want it, right? Um, in this case, even if you need to change the data source, um, you can change it quite easily by either, you know, just connecting to new data and then going, you know, replace data source, right? Or just simple um, edit data source. A couple of ways to uh, change the data uh, in there as well. Cool. Um, we covered this one. Multiple data sources, right? So as I said, having separate data sources for advanced chart types actually is, is a good idea, right? Um, because you might need to aggregate it to a certain level, right? Or you might need to keep it really, really granular. And you don't want that to affect your all other chart types, right? So just have a separate data source for it, okay? And you can always bring in the multiple views onto the same dashboard, right? So um, if I were to show you an example of that, it would look something like this, right? Where you got um, a fairly complicated uh, Coxcomb, right? 
Um, so this one is actually coming from, so if you look at it, right, there are, uh, this one is coming from sample superstore, right, so the map is coming from there. And uh, the Coxcomb chart is coming up uh, from this made up sales data, right, it's a separate data source. And then once I have it here, right, I can always basically just build that interactivity. Okay. So if you have it like this, then your end users would be happy. You know, they, do, they don't need to basically recreate, any, recreate anything from scratch. Right. Cool. So in the end, I still have to say this. You don't have to build everything in Tableau. Okay, um, because the purpose of Tableau is not to build a million different chart types. It is to comfortably analyze your data and to provide that experience. That is the that is the overall objective, right? And if you really must, there are um, packages, languages, all sorts of good things out there which are purpose built for some of the complex charts, right? So, for example. If I had to uh, click on this one, what this is is um, a normal chart in Tableau, right? Which basically then also has a D3 chart, right? A D3 chart embedded in a web object in a dashboard, okay? In future, the possibilities are going to be even more powerful with the extensions API that we're going to launch. Right? Um, with that, you'll be able to do a lot more. Right? But even today, like with the, with the uh, JavaScript API that we have, right, the web object in the dashboard, um, you, can, you can do that today as well. Right? And at times, it's, it's just um, easier to do it if you already got skills. Right? Right? So with that, let's go to the summary. You can make any chart you want in Tableau, um, pretty much, okay? Um, when someone asks you to make a complex chart, don't just simply go and start building one, right? Um, as I said, I'm still a bit of a purist when it comes to that because I've got an analyze mindset, not a build mindset, right? Um, even if it is common usage, Right? So some cases, people will give an excuse that I want a gauge simply because I'm used to it. Everyone is used to it. We've been using it for a long time. I'm sorry, it's not a good enough reason. Just because you've been doing something for a long time does not make it right. right? So hold yourself, you know, um, I mean, in a, in a position where you should be able to intelligently challenge people and question their choices as well. Right? Don't just simply go ahead and do it. And if you really must, right, templatize. I don't even know if that's a word, but it didn't give me an error, so I just went with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> templatize as much as you can, right? Uh, so you put in the effort, right, or you took someone else's effort, right, but then you made it so simple for everyone else that they can simply just repurpose it, okay? With that, I'm going to say, please do uh, fill up the survey. It's important. Right. Um, let me know how I did. Right. Let us know what we can do better uh, next time. And uh, if you've got any questions, um, I'll be sticking around here. Um, or you can find me downstairs at the party as well. Uh, it's better if you find me before two beers. <laughs> After that, uh, good luck. <laughs> It'll take longer. But uh, I'll be here for now. So ask any questions you have. Yeah. Thank you for joining. <laughs>